Hello, everybody. Um, hope you have. Hope you hope you guys are having a good weekend. Um, I'm here to talk about June 26th, League of Legends uh, DFS slate. Um, hopefully, you guys find these videos somewhat interesting. Um, but here, a uh, little past midnight here, at Eastern Time. Um, I'm here to talk about the four game slate uh, DFS slate. Um, two games in China and two games in Korea. So without further ado, let's dive in. I will pull up the starters right here. Yeah, so it's IG versus AL, uh, Invictus Gaming versus uh, Anyone's Legend. Basically, it's a toss-up game. Um, I have a pretty good lean on one of them here. I'll dive into that shortly. And then EDG versus BLG is a little more lopsided in favor of EDG. Um, but I do think BLG is somewhat live today. Um, so I'll share my predictions for that matchup as well. And then in the LCK, it's Hanwha Life versus Nongshim Red Force. Um, Nongshim is a good sizable favorite over HLE, who I think is one of the worst teams in the LCK. And then DRX is a sizable favorite as well over Guangdong Freaks. So let's go into the Chinese matchups because I think that is those are a little more closer at least um, uh, just based on the Vegas odds. So first, IG versus AL. I think that is a very interesting one. Um, where is my notes? There you go. So here are my notes. Let me make this a little bit smaller or I'll just pull it up right here. Yeah, so as you guys know, um, we're about two, three, uh, two to three weeks in in, the, in China in the LPL. Um, so they, you know, we have a pretty good sizable data um, for both teams. Invictus Gaming, for example, has lost to Weibo Gaming and Top Esports and EDG, and those are pretty all three good, pretty good teams, if not elite teams. Um, and then they beat FPX, who they've been struggling, who have been struggling. I mean, I think they're 0 and 5 in the LPL. And then Anyone's Legend, um, they beat Rare Atom, they beat BLG, but then they lost to LNG and LGD. Um, they do not like three going three games, going the distance. Uh, they either win two to zero or lose two to zero. Um, so, but for what it's worth, um, Anyone's Legend is probably one of probably the most unpredictable teams team i think in my opinion so far in the summer split i was looking at the stats and their wins versus and their losses and they're all over the the graph and data metrics and everything so it's really hard to kind of um gauge as to how good they are i guess I mean, and, and that kind of also shows me maybe their ceiling is high as well as their floor is really low. Um, I think the gap between, you know, their wins versus their losses, the, the skill gap is pretty high. So it really depends on the matchup, I think. So I was trying to figure out like what their strengths are and their weaknesses are um, just based on the damage dealt and the gold earned per for each of the players and the, the each player's tendencies and how they like to play as a team. So, so far, I mean, from my understanding, after reading all those stats, um, they like to put a lot of resources in the top half. And then in the later in the game, they put a lot of resources in Betty and Chocho. So I think early in the game, they really put a lot of resources in ZDZ in the top lane. And their jungler Xiao is really good. Um, and then, but then he's going up against June, who, who, as you guys, if you guys have watched my videos before, you know, June really is one of the top junglers, in my opinion, in China. So that's going to be a tough matchup. And I think it's more of a wash here. And then Zika is not bad. I mean, he's not a scrub either. Um, but for IG, I think they go as June and Yukai go in the mid lane. So really, I think it's going to be critical. I think I think the answer is going to be here in the bottom lane and the mid lane. I know Forge has been playing a little bit better. It's obviously, they he's been playing much better in their wins. As cliche as that sounds, um, he is really bad in their losses, and he was really good in their wins. Um, so what does that mean? So I think it really comes down to the bottom lane here. I think Forge and Yukai, I think they're going to, 
be okay against each other. Um, I think Wink is, in my opinion, is one of the worst AD carries. Um, I think with Jin Liu, um, who used to be Lucas, I think this is probably one of the worst bottom duos, in my opinion, going up against Betty and Chocho. I think Betty is a really good AD carry. I think Betty, Betty used to be really, really good as well um, uh, for other teams before. So I don't know. I really like anyone's legend here today. I think um, also from the leverage standpoint, I know a lot of people will pick IG just based on the brand recognition. I think IG is more heard of positively compared to anyone's legend, I think, who used to be Rogue Warriors. And people know Rogue Warriors used to be really bad historically. Um, but yeah, I really like the matchup for anyone's legend here today. That's where I'm leaning. Um, that's probably where I'm going to go. Um, just based on the fact that in the bottom lane and the AD carry friendly meta, I think Betty is a better AD carry than Wink. And then in other lanes, like I said, ZDZ over Zika, I think slightly, and then Jiao and Jun, I think those are wash. And then hopefully, just based on the stats, I think Forge will do okay against Yukai. But I do think he has a type of skill sets, Yukai, um, that can break the slate. Um, so I'm a little worried about Jun and Yukai synergy here against Xiao Hao Forge, but I do think as long as Forge does not feed <laughs> until like maybe mid game, late game, I think Betty and Cho Cho will be much better than Wink and Xin Liu. So I'm picking anyone's legend to win. But obviously, you know, as the odds indicate, IG is a live underdog or live, live not underdog live uh opponent so for gpp purposes for dfs i think you definitely need to play one of these two teams and one not one last thing i'll say about this matchup is that it has the highest combined kills per minute at the bloody kill upside uh compared to all three other games um so you do definitely need to want to have a piece of this game um for your main stacks i think Second game of the slate is uh, EDG versus BLG. Like I said, EDG is a good sizable favorite at minus 240. Um, I do think EDG is going to win today. Um, Viper and Mako have been playing really well. And then going, um, EDG going up against, I or Scout going up against Icon, who's who started last game and he's starting again over Fofo in the mid lane. I do think Scout has an advantage there over Icon. Icon really hasn't shown me that he is an upgrade for BLG and over Fofo, who used to start for BLG um, in the last series that he played in. So I really like Scout here. Um, obviously, EDG goes as the bottom lane goes, so, um, though they put a lot of resources in Viper and Mako. Viper's kill share percentage is ridiculously high, so you have to have them if you are stacking EDG like me. Um, and then in the top half, I think Ben is try still trying to get used to BLG's uh, game style. And then Ben and Weiwei have not shown me that they are playing really well or they're in sync. So I, I do like Flandre, JJ over that. So all signs point to me that EDG is going to win. Um, but as long as, you know, yeah, I mean, Doggo, Doggo scares me a little bit. But in any, any other lane, I think Ben is okay. Obviously, when he gets going, he's good. I mean, when he played for RNG and the MSI, they won the whole thing, right? He, he looked really good. But playing with a new jungler and new teammates for Ben have given him um, some struggles here um, early in the summer split, but that was also the case when he joined RNG in the spring split, like early in the, in the early days of the spring split, Ben with RNG, he struggled a lot. And the same thing is happening right now in the summer split for Ben. So I think until maybe a few more weeks in throughout the mid point of the summer split, I think they're going to struggle a little bit in the top half, especially in Icon coming back, like I said, for BLG and starting now with these new teammates. Um, I think that team needs a little bit of more, a little bit more time. And that's going to be hard going up against very experienced EDG, who uh, the starting five, which, you know, starting five of this team have been playing together for a long time and winning the Worlds last year. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm picking EDG. And then in the LCK, I think, I think the odds are 
pretty accurate in my opinion, but at the same time, I think KDF is a better team than HLE. So um, I do think Nongshim has a pretty good chance. I'm pretty confident that Nongshim is going to beat HLE and then DRX beating KDF. It's a boring take to pick two favorites um, in the LCK, but you know all the opponent history and the metrics. Um, I put it here, put a note here, but all metrics point to Nongshim winning except for the mid to late game uh, maybe, but I do not believe that HLE has the personnel to kind of overcome the deficit, maybe in the mid to late game, which tells me that Nongshim, you know, should win the matchup, especially in the top lane. I know Dudu has been playing well for HLE, but I believe in Kana, and at least at least Kana is going to neutralize Dudu. I think HLE has been their brightest, only brightest, only bright spots are in Dudu and then in the bottom lane at times. Their mid laner, Karis, is graded out as one of the worst mid laners in all major regions. So I'm a little worried for HLE in that sense and going up against BDD, who was, you know, really, really good um, in the last series out against KDF, I believe. Um, so I, I think Nongshim should win here pretty easily, I think. And DRX KDF, um, based on the stats, advantages for DRX, except for the early game rating. And, you know, Guangdong Freaks has better talent than, like I said, HLE. So I, I think Guangdong Freaks can upset one of these teams, top teams, if they hit on all cylinders and reach their potential, especially in the bottom lane. I know Teddy have been playing, has been playing really well. Um I know Hoyt, one thing I would like to point out is that Hoyt may not start here today um, because they brought in a new a new support for KDF last series. So I don't know if I would play them, play him, um, but Teddy can definitely carry a game. Uh, so I, that's why I have DRX win, winning two to one. I think KDF can definitely, you know, pull this off in a series and, Deft now coming back um, to play live in front of other people, in front of the crowd after struggling with COVID. I think he needs a game or two, a series or two to get used to the crowd um, noises on, and all that and, you know, communicating with the team in person on the stage uh, with the crowd watching them and stuff. So I do think um, there's a good chance that KDF can pull off of an upset. Um, maybe a game, but then ultimately I think DRX's uh, team has been playing really well, especially Piosek in the, in the jungle position, who I think has um, an edge over Elam. But in the top lane, you know, Keen is a really good player. So I think this is more of a wash. If not, Keen has an advantage. Um, and then Zika has been playing really lights out. <laughs> um, but Faith is no joke either. So I do think KDF has pretty good roster here. That can maybe pull this off, but you know, I think DRX should prevail at the end of the day. Um, but as you guys see here, combined kills per minute, um, measuring the kill upside. Um, this is this is uh graded out as the lowest kill upside game. So you can play DRX, but kind of expect that they're not gonna score as well as probably the winners from other games. Um, KDF has been playing slow as well, so I do think overall it's going to be a slow matchup. And then uh, for HLE and Nongshim, like I said, um, I think Nongshim's going to win pretty confidently. Uh, but this one actually is graded out to be faster than the other LCK matchup that I just talked about. So yeah, anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to reach out uh, at the FS Chan on Twitter, YouTube, or on Discord. Uh, this video is sponsored by True DFS. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button and then subscribe button if you want to watch videos about other sports. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.